Hi class. Um, today I want to go over your supply kit and just kind of talk about the different things that are in it. And then I want you to double check to make sure all of those things were in the kit that you picked up from school uh, this week. Um, because, you know, sometimes we make mistakes and there might be something missing. If it is missing, then we can make sure that you get it um, before you need it. So um, let's start by talking about the different kinds of clay that you've received. One of them is called fire clay stoneware with iron. And that is going to be a uh, um, pinkish color, a kind of um, pinkish color. And the great part about this clay is that it has a lot of different size particles from really small to really big, including sand and something called grog, which is ground up bisquare. And the great part about that is that this clay will shrink less and warp less and because of that it'll crack less. So this clay is really forgiving and for your first, at least your first project, or first few projects, the more difficult ones, I'll have you working with this clay. You can tell the difference between this clay that has iron in it from the other clay that has iron in it because the second clay is called um, Iron Range, and this one is a deeper orangey red color. It has a lot of iron in it, and this clay is also a really decent clay. It just um, feels a little bit more fine, it, you know, not as many different size particles as the fire clay stoneware with iron. And it's used for things like, um, as an example, creating a form like this jar and then um, applying a white slip and carving back down to the clay body. And um, so this is maybe a similar like project that we might do eventually in the semester. Then we also have a white clay. And this is, it doesn't look white right away. It looks kind of grayish in color. Um, but when it gets fired, those impurities burn out and it does become very white. And the reasons that people use this clay, that a lot of times if you're drawing or painting on the clay, um, you might use this clay because then you don't have to add a white slip first. Um, so there are reasons, but when you do work with sculpture, um, this clay is really fine and it can, um, it'll shrink a lot more than like the fire clay stoneware with iron. And because it shrinks more, it can crack more and um, warp more. So it's not as forgiving. I still love it, but it's just not that forgiving. So those are your clays. White stoneware, um, the fire clay stoneware with iron, and then the iron range. All of those clay bodies are fired to the same temperature. They just have different um, importance in our class and we'll have different projects with them. The next thing that you probably saw right away is this box that has underglaze in it. So these are Amico underglazes. And um, we do love them in our class because it's a way for you to be able to paint on the surface. To give you an idea about what um, items might look like when you paint with these, um, they would be finished with a clear glaze. So here's a mug with a woman with a fawn, and you can see the underglaze colors that are used here. This green was made by mixing the turquoise and the chartreuse together. And so we can mix these just like regular paints and to get a, a different colors. So they're kind of wonderful things. You'll see they're mostly primary colors. We have uh, red here um, that looks pink, but I know it's red. Yellow, white, um, we have black, uh, electric blue, turquoise, and chartreuse. And then we have something called white slip in there. Now the white slip is what I used on this, and this slip is special. This slip is um, basically clay and water with maybe a few other things in it, and this white slip can actually change the clay body color. So there will be times that we're going to use this as well. Make sure that you um, know that it's not exactly the same as underglaze. Underglaze as gum in it and all these things that help it adhere um, at any time, even on bisqueware. But this will have very specific um, time slots to use it um, with. 
So let's put this back away in your toolkit. Right. Now going into the bag, there are things that you're going to be using later. This brown paper is garden paper and we're going to be using that when we work with slabs and the same is true for this black tar paper. So don't lose that. Keep that set aside. You see canvas in your bag and you're going to be using the canvas um, to wedge clay on. Sometimes you'll be working on it. You can see over here I have a Ceramics 2 project um, started for a video and I'm working on top of some very well used canvas. And so this is going to be an important part of your setup for your class, for your classroom workspace. Next, you'll see paper plates in varying sizes. We're going to be using these later in the semester. Please don't lose them. Keep them um, around. We're going to be needing those. You can't just sub in a different plate. We need just paper ones because the sticky ones will have problems. You will also find a palette, and that is for the underglaze, for mixing your underglaze into. Oh, there's another small plate. And you'll see a paddle. These paddles are really important. For example, on my um, bread bowl that I'm working on currently, I use it to bring the clay back in when it starts bulging out. So this is a really nice paddle that we are loaning to you. This seems odd, the Scotch-Brite scrubby for cleaning pans when you're washing dishes. Works really well on the lips of pots and you'll be seeing that right away um, in videos for the first week. Then, I love this, Rachel, always a safety person. Um, we have a needle tool, be careful with this, it is sharp. Um, and a sponge, we use those um, quite a bit, you'll see that in videos. This is a good way to store it so you don't hurt yourself. And we have these tools called ribs. This is a um, red rib, which is used a lot for smoothing. And this is a rib that's like that, but made of metal. They're pretty sharp, so you do have to be careful with them, but this is really great for scraping a surface um, to maybe fill in a hole or remove clay that's lumpy for smoothing. And then we have this one that looks like this one, but has serrations. And that one will be used to um, slip and score. That is to make score marks on clay and rehydrate that with slip or water so that um, the area becomes rehydrated. This tool right here is a cutting wire and that's going to be used for cutting clay. And um, let's see if I can break into it. Oh, look at that, nice sharp knife. And probably why Rachel put the needle tool in like that, be my guess. She's seen me in action. This is a little bit like fishing line where it gets tangled, but not impossible to undo. So when I use this with the clay, oftentimes if I need to get a hunk of clay off, I will. I can cut it very easily just with this cutting wire, like that. All right, next. Next tools, we have a series of brushes that you'll be using with underglaze. And you'll want to keep those clean and um, stored well. And then you'll see these two tools here are carving tools, and you're going to be using those on your very first project, for sure and a fettling knife. These are a little bit sharp, um, but they're really great tools for um, like cutting a rim of, on, uh, of clay or in different ways that you'll see me be using throughout the semester. Okay, so that's it with the, the bag of tools. And I have toolboxes a lot of times that I keep my tools in. You can choose to do whatever you want, maybe keep it in the bag um, until you need it. But there's other tools that you might need and probably will need that I need to talk about. So I'm going to wrap this up and show you those tools real quick. All right, so a couple tools that you'll need to buy are um, a rolling pin. This one's pretty heavy duty, 
But when we get to making slabs, you're going to need that. And um, it would also be helpful if you got two paint sticks um, from a paint store or, or something because they will be a good thickness for you when you are um, making slab work. We can put the slab of clay down and roll it between the two um, paint sticks. So paint sticks, roller. This is a banding wheel, a heavy duty one that I've had for probably a solid 25 years. Um, it's pretty well uh, beaten up, but you can get a similar one that doesn't cost as much. It's called a Lazy Susan. I don't know why they call it a Lazy Susan. I think it's rude. Um, but you can buy one probably at a thrift store really cheap along with the rolling pin at a thrift store. So um, either online if you feel safer that way or run into a thrift store. And the Lazy Susan is just used as a, like a centerpiece and that you can... Um, that you can put something on top of. So when I'm working on something, I can place it on top and turn it really easily instead of having to turn the actual object. That's how that is used. Okay, and another thing that you might want to get is this file. This is called a sure form file, S-U-R-form. And it's used for um, grading down, let's say if my rim is uneven and I want to fix that, I can use this file really easily. And so that's going to be something that would really be helpful for you. And you can get it at a hardware store, they're not expensive, and they work really well with, with clay. And then the last thing that won't cost you much or if anything is plastic. You need plastic to cover up your work. You can see here that I'm covering up just the lip of this uh, bread bowl because I want the bottom to set up and be able to support it. And so plastic will be another thing that you'll need. Now the last thing I want to talk about with regards to the semester is your workspace. You're going to want to set up a space that does not get too cold. Right now, we're still in the throes of summer and it's nice and warm out and overnight lows are not that low, but eventually it's going to get colder out. And you do not want clay to freeze. If you're building a project like this one and um, it drops below freezing, it will literally break apart in sheets. So you're gonna want a space that's always going to stay um, you know, above freezing at a warm enough temperature for the clay. And um, also, when you're working with your clay, make sure you keep it covered up. Make sure that you keep all the air out and wrap it up so that it doesn't dry out on you. It's not that it's impossible to rehydrate it, but it does complicate things. So keeping it wet to begin with is really, really important. I think that is everything for the supply kit. Just keep everything safe um, and try to find a space for yourself to work all the time so that you're not um, you know, in, in spaces where your family or friends might injure your work um, or animals. I've heard that one, um, usually a cat climbing around on a table or something. So watch out for that and just try to be as safe as you can with the supplies. If you run out of supplies, as a reminder, you can email uh, Rachel and she can put some more supplies out on the loading dock for you to pick up and on um, either Tuesdays or Fridays. So you would want to get a hold of her ahead of time so that she can schedule it. Thank you.